Hello again, my dear friends. I'm back with some more stories for you today. Today's first story is about OP's favoritism. She decided that it's okay to invite her son's friend to their family vacation and pay for him, but doesn't allow her daughter's baby daddy to come along because she barely knows him. Well, I think that would be a great opportunity for OP to get to know him, wouldn't it? Listen to the story, guys, to hear my insights and what community thinks about it. Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. Every year, my husband and I, 51 male, 50 female, go on a vacation with our children, G, 23 male, and H, 26 female. This has been a long-standing tradition. As they got older, they began expressing interest in having guests join us. So their father and I implemented a rule that unless you're engaged or married to this person, they aren't allowed to tag along. This rule was implemented while G and H were still in middle and high school. We hated being the boring parents, but it saved us from having to look after someone else's child while on vacation. This was never a real hard and fast rule, of course. It was something we said at a time when neither of our children would realistically be getting engaged. Now that they're both over 18, it was kind of silently shifted to any serious romantic partner could join us. We've never brought this up, however, because it hasn't been relevant. We have been introduced to some of H's partners, but none of them have been around for longer than a year. G has never introduced us to anyone. Last year, my son approached me and asked me if his best friend, R, 24 male, could join us for vacation that year. This was a longtime friend of his, one that my husband and I could basically consider a second son at this point. He has stayed over with us more times than I could ever possibly keep track of, and in the past, we had considering allowing him to come along when he and my son were still little, but decided against it as we knew H would also want to bring a friend, and didn't have one we knew well enough to allow. This conversation was a light-hearted one, where my son said he knew they weren't engaged, but he was committed to spending his life with R. We agreed he could come, and last year's vacation was a lot of fun, despite H's protests. This year, things have been contentious. H recently revealed that she's pregnant when we didn't even know she was seeing anyone. We met this man once after this revelation, and during this time, we got news that they're now engaged. They have seemingly been together for four months, and she's been pregnant for three of those. She asked if he could come on vacation with us this year, and we said no. She argued that this wasn't fair, as R is coming again, and he and my son aren't engaged. I explained what I did here about how that rule doesn't really apply anymore, but she wasn't having it. She said we were playing favorites, and it wasn't fair, but we've known R since he was young and know nothing about this man. I would like outside opinions. Am I the a-hole? Edit. My husband and I pay for plane tickets, accommodations, and most meals. Any extras, souvenirs, extra experiences, etc. are covered by the kids and their guests who want them. Well, in my opinion, OP is clearly playing favorites. OP's daughter is even engaged now, one of OP's rules. This vacation will give OP's family the opportunity to get to know future son-in-law. To be honest, I think OP should be the one inviting him to try to get to know him during the trip. OP's behavior might set a bad mood between her and future son-in-law, which can affect her seeing her grandkids in the future. And in general, I don't understand how you can favor one of your kids over the other. And now let's see, does community agree with me? Extinct Diplodocus says, Yes, you're the a-hole. You've moved the goalpost without warning. It's really hard for you to deny that Helen has a romantic partner when she's pregnant and has introduced her partner to you. Plus, they're engaged. Must they be married for multiple years to bring them to your standard that allowed Glenn to bring Romeo? Or will you move the goalpost again and say they also need to be regular visitors? Silent Sky says, While I understand your discomfort, you're the a-hole because you set a rule and if your kids took you seriously, which it seems they mostly do, they wouldn't really question the letter of the law. Your daughter is three months pregnant by and engaged to a man who she has been seeing for four months. As a parent myself, this would set off all kinds of red flags, and I'd let him go on the trip so I could get to know him better and suss out the real situation without alienating my daughter. This guy could be good for her, and the relationship just happened to start in a big way, or she's getting herself into a pretty deep situation. Either way, she needs you there for her, and money is less than your relationship with your daughter. How about inviting them over more? Kill them with kindness. Your son met the spirit of the rule and your daughter met the letter. I get why you want to say no and that your money is yours to do with as you please, 
but I think you're being pretty short-sighted here considering what is potentially at risk. Crystal Queen 3000 says, You're the a-hole. You changed the rules to suit yourself, and it does sound like you're playing favorites. Or you're making a point that you don't agree with her life choices. She's 26, engaged, and pregnant by this man, and all you're doing is ensuring you'll have a crappy relationship with them both and your future grandkid. I, 25 female, am getting married to my 25 male fiancé Jonathan in two weeks, and we're having a small private, parents-only ceremony, which includes my dad, my stepmom, my soon-to-be in-laws, my mom, and her boyfriend. Friday night before the wedding, my soon-to-be mother-in-law decided to get a group of my gal pals together for a night on the town, and my mom was all for it, until I mentioned my stepmom Lisa, 40 female, would be joining us. My mother has a one-sided falling out with Lisa, and Lisa just ignores it. She's very respectful of my mom, and has never given her a reason to be hateful, other than getting married to my dad. She told me if Lisa is joining us, she will not be. My parents have been divorced for seven years, and I feel as if my mom still hasn't moved on. She's dated multiple men, and she's been with Eric, 49 male, for two years, and I've only met the guy three times, and I honestly didn't really feel comfortable inviting the guy, but I didn't want my mom to feel like a third wheel going alone, so I reluctantly invited him. Last night, I made it clear to my mom that both her and Lisa and my mother-in-law would be helping me get ready for my big day being my dress takes multiple people to tie the back together. My mom threw an absolute fit when I told her this. She told me she was my mother. She gave birth to me and raised me my whole life. Therefore, she should be helping me get ready, not Lisa. I explained to her that this is my day, the most important day of my life, and I would be super disappointed if she only made a short appearance to the ceremony. I also explained to her that Lisa is also an important person in my life, and I want her involved. She made the excuse that she has anxiety and PTSD around my dad and Lisa, which neither of them have ever given her a reason to be. She also pissed me off by telling her whole family about the wedding, even though it was supposed to be a secret. Now grandma is upset that she wasn't invited. I asked my sister Hannah, 23 female, for an opinion on the matter, and she told me to disinvite mom, because it's my big day and not hers, and all she'll do is make it about her and create drama the entire day ruining the ceremony and everything. My fiancé agreed on this matter. I'm really on the edge of the matter. I want my parents to both be present on the most important day of my life. But I really don't want to deal with my mom's drama and have her pull crap with me. I want to have a good day and spend the time celebrating with my fiancé. Would I be the a-hole for disinviting my mother to my wedding? Well, in my opinion, that's a tricky situation. I'm not saying OP's mother is in the right here. But basically, OP is choosing her stepmother over her mother. I think that she needs to try and talk with her mother again and tell her that she is behaving childishly, which she really is. What would you do, guys, if you were in OP's shoes? Let's see what the community has to say about this situation. Tara Cosplay says, Not the a-hole. Your wedding, your rules. If your mother doesn't like it, she need not attend. Simple as that. Do what is best for you and your partner on a day that is to be about only you and your partner. Nobody else has a right to say in how you celebrate a day meant for only the two of you. Cannabis Aficionado says, Not the a-hole. You tried to be fair to both sides. Your father and his wife seem to be cool, but your mother wants to stomp her feet like a toddler. If your gut and instincts are telling you to disinvite, it's likely for a reason. Ask yourself this, Who attending could you see ruining your wedding? Would you be okay without them present? Good luck. I have decided says, You're the a-hole. You have made your choice. You want stepmother and not your mother. If you throw your mother away, say goodbye to any relationship at all. You obviously don't really care for your mother. I, 34 male, grew up in a very heavy conservative household. My parents and my older brother, Max, 38 male, all hold extreme views. I'm gay, so that was hard on me growing up. In my 20s, my grandpa died and left me a large chunk of inheritance. It was enough to put a down payment on a house in another county. I decided I no longer wanted to be associated with my family, so I came out to them right before I moved away. They reacted horribly, saying that I was going to rot in hell and that I was dead to them. Fine with me. I moved and we haven't spoken in years. Since I moved, I landed a great job and met the love of my life, my husband Jonah, 35 male. However, this is where the problem arises. A month ago, I got a message from Max. He apologized for what he said when I came out 
and said he wanted to reconnect. But he then told me that he had lost his job and his family, his wife Danny and their two kids, was about to be evicted. So he asked me if he would be able to stay with me for a few months until they get back on their feet. He also said that he would have asked to stay at my parents' place, but they recently moved to an assisted living facility. My first instinct was to say no, but when I told Jonah, he said we should give them a chance because Max could have changed and he doesn't want the kids to be homeless. I finally agreed and messaged Max that I would help him on a few conditions. One, under no circumstances is he allowed to bring up politics or mention his political opinions. Two, under no circumstances is he allowed to disrespect me, my husband, or our home. I told Max that if they break the rules, he and his family would be out. Zero tolerance. He agreed, and they came to stay a few weeks ago. Jonah works from home, so I told him to tell me if Max ever said or did anything that broke the rules. For the first few weeks, everything was fine. But a few days ago, Jonah called me crying while I was at work. He said that he told Max to clean up after his kids because they were making a mess. Max didn't want to, so he started an argument. It culminated in Max screaming that he didn't want a F explicative, telling him what to do. I was furious. When I got home, I told Max he and his family had two days to pack and get out. He started arguing with me and said Jonah was lying, but I know Jonah would never lie about something like that. When he saw I was serious, he said I was a terrible person for making his kids homeless. But I said he did this to himself. Danny then stepped in and apologized for Max, which confirms he said it, and begged me to give them another chance. But I said zero tolerance means zero tolerance. They didn't start packing until I threatened to call the police. I gave them the address of a homeless shelter and they left. But they keep texting asking to come back, saying their kids are suffering. Even some of my cousins are getting involved and are saying it's cruel to punish children for their parents' mistake. Am I the a-hole here? Well guys, in the first place, when I heard OP decided to let his brother and his family stay, I knew straight away he made a mistake, and that's going to result in OP having to kick him out. OP shouldn't feel guilty at all. Yes, the children are not at fault here at all, but that's their parents' problem to worry about, don't you think, guys? And let's see what the community says. Oishio42 says, not the a-hole. There were very basic conditions that he not insult you or your partner, and he decided to do just that. He wasn't entitled to stay in the first place. He's just a user only willing to contact family when he needs something. Probably part of the attitude that has him in this situation to begin with. Personally, I'd also feel bad about the kids, so I'd offer that Danny and the kids could stay, with the same conditions, plus that Max is not allowed in the home. If they refuse because they don't want to be separated, then it cannot in any way be considered your fault that the kids are homeless. TGAH says, not the a-hole. Max only reached out and apologized because he needed help. You were very generous to give him a second chance, and he blew it. The shelter can help get him back on his feet, and in the meantime, they will all be getting their basic needs met. Any cousins getting involved can step up and offer housing to Max and his family. Bert6419 says, As a conservative-leaning person here, you are definitely not the a-hole. You were smart to go no contact, and it's not because of politics. These people are just basic a-holes. Please don't paint all with the same brush as they do, or you could also become the a-hole. My ex fought very hard for our current parenting agreement, but he never sticks to his days as his work schedule is long and at times unpredictable. It was frustrating for me and would hurt my son that he wouldn't see his dad when he thought he was going to. So I threatened to drop our son off to my ex one day when he was having dinner with a client, since it was his day. Ever since, my ex has offered me and our son bribes whenever he misses his day and is a lot better at making the time up with our son. He told my brother he couldn't go on the boys' trip their friends were planning because he was taking me and our son on a safari holiday to make up for missing his time with our son. I don't know what he said exactly, but he explained that he bribes me whenever he misses his parenting time to keep the peace. My brother confronted me about it and told me I was humiliating myself, him and our family, by acting like a beggar. He said if I wanted to take my son on holiday, I should have asked him or our parents instead of emotionally blackmailing my ex into bribing me. He kept on and on about how their business was important, and I should be more understanding of my ex sometimes having to miss time with my son, as his hard work would only benefit my son in the long run. Am I the a-hole? In my opinion, OP's brother should mind his own business. OP's life is his own business. 
whatever it takes to make Sun's life as fulfilling as possible is what it takes. Huff us puff us says, based on the info provided, not the a-hole, unless you're blackmailing him and threatening to go to CPS, the courts, etc. I don't see how you'd be in the wrong. The only one suffering here is your child. Your ex should be embarrassed that he had to resort to bribing because he can't stick to his fatherly duties. McGillicuddy says, It doesn't sound like you actually ask for any of it. Just threaten to make him take his son when he's supposed to. You need to be documenting every time he's skipping his court-appointed parenting time. After a year passes, go back to court for a revision that better fits your life, schedule, with your backup. It's not fair to your son, even if you guys get makeup gifts. He's being shown you can try to buy love, and that's not how it works, and it will still hurt him in the end. Not the a-hole. Sequin says, not the a-hole. Who's to say that this safari holiday will ever happen? Your ex is only going to get so long to watch his boy grow up, and I'm pretty sure he'd rather a guaranteed pizza and movie night with your ex than this safari holiday, which might never happen. And your brother has no business getting involved.